welcome to Celebrity Liar. Sorry we're a little bit late. There was uh, traffic congestion on the information superhighway. My name is Andrew Hill Newman, and tonight, my co-host, your conduit, no, your comely conduit for what? questions and comments is Caitlin Thompson. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. It is my pleasure to have you here. very excited to be here. Now, Caitlin knows, because she's a big fan of the show, but in case you don't, the game we play here is simple. Two celebrities are going to tell you the exact same story as if it happened to them. In truth, it only happened to one of them. It is going to be up to you to decide who's, who's the, the liar. liar. And I will be running the chat room, so send me your questions, and I'll be passing them along to our celebrities. And also, don't forget to vote, because... I'll be announcing the results. Yeah, you got to vote for who you think the liar is. And Very if important. you are still watching this on the front page of theroomlive.com, go ahead and click on that white bar under the window that says chat and view larger, and it'll bring you to a page where you can do just that. You'll see it bigger, and you'll be able to log in, which is really easy, and chat. But please let us get to the celebrities tonight is going to be a great game michael bunin won this game the very first time we played it in this tiny room Returning and nicole champion. sullivan won celebrity poker showdown the first time we played that in a tiny casino in las vegas please make with the cheering and clapping for nicole sullivan and michael bunin Hello, I'm assuming you're Nicole Sullivan and you're Michael Bunin. Correct. Yes. Oh, it is so or good. am I lying? I don't know. Oh, it's <laughs> already begun. As a matter of fact, it has already begun because before we came on the internet, uh, they were off in the corner exchanging personal stories. I haven't heard them. Uh, Robin has titled them and placed them within the bowl of stories. We also drew randomly to see who would go first, and Michael Bunin won that draw. So if we could get two minutes on the clock, we're going to jump right in. I'm going to select a story at random. Michael, you will go first and tell us the story that we call... Bungie. Um, yeah. It was uh, like sophomore year of college, and I went to see a buddy of mine from high school who didn't go. I went to UNLV, didn't go there, didn't really go to college. Ends up living in Colorado and uh, working in like a parks area, sort of recreation area. So I go to visit him on a break, and I'm not, I'm not much of an outdoors guy, so uh, I go to see him, and he wants to tool around a little bit, and I'm into whatever he wants to do. He wants to go on a bike ride. Great. You know, bike ride to me is bike around the corner to get some coffee. He's it's mountain bikes, so we're trying to go up and head down hills and whatnot. And my legs are just killing me, so I kind of I put it into that. Then he's like, "Well, we'll just go for a hike." And again, I'm thinking hike a trail, but it's more like climbing. So it's really hard. And I know I know I'm pissing him off, and he's a good friend of mine. So finally, I had seen a bungee jump thing like in the area, in the vicinity, like a few miles away. So I suggest this, which would not be in my nature to do, but I know it might make him happy, and it does. So we go over there. Now we go to this bungee jump place, and it literally, like, the, like anybody that gets rejected from working in a carnival apparently is allowed to work at a bungee <laughs> jump place. So we go, and it's a whole process. You wait in a long line to then have like a 30-page contract that you sign 15 times to basically say, if I die, it's not anybody's fault but mine. And we get to the top, and it's a whole, I mean, it's taking forever, and they're putting, you know, the cords on you. And now I'm a little OCD and I'm a little superstitious, so like they had a red cord on me, but I didn't want red because red's kind of bad luck. So we had to go through the cords and I'm embarrassing my buddy and I'm, everybody's getting mad in the line. Finally we get there, I get the green cord on me because I like green, it's a good, it's an easy, it's a soothing color and it's, it's money, that's fine. So you get to the edge and you have two choices, you can dive or you can fall. I of course just choose to fall, I'm not going to dive into anything stupid uh, that could possibly end it. So I go and it's perfect. And everything goes great, and I'm really excited about it. And I'm thinking, let's do it again. And I see these red sirens out of the corner of my eye, and I panic because I'm like, did I smash my head or something? Apparently, the Colorado police, everybody pulled up to shut the place down because it was so unbelievably safe. So I guess I just got the last ride in. Oh, you also got the last word in after two <laughs> minutes, but it sounds vaguely plausible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, I understand something similar may have happened to you. Uh, yeah, it was directly after college, and my friend Kyle, and I, Kyle Hall and I went to go visit a friend of ours who lived in Boulder, Colorado, and he's this hippie guy. He was literally, like, saving trees or something so on the nose, I couldn't believe it. Uh, and so we went, and he was like, we're going like, to go mountain biking, and I was like, I don't know, after a minute, I was like, my ass hurts. Uh, and then we were hiking, but, like, it's called boulder, I guess. Right? Like, there's literally <laughs> boulders. Like, I didn't, that's what I was unaware of. Like, you have to jump. Uh, it was horrible. And I... 
And so we kept on doing these things. I said, I seen on the drive up, I was like, what about that bungee? And he's like, I don't know. I was like, let's, we all go bungee jumping. Look how outdoorsy I am. I'm so fun. Well, we went and it's a crane in the middle of nowhere. It's just a crane. And, and, but in, and it's run by literally a, a, b- a bunch of teenagers, like teenage carnies. So it's the worst of both worlds, like uh, young, dumb versions of, <laughs> of those horrible human beings. And you've designed away eight, your life on 8,000 pieces of paper. Here's where the hiccup comes, is that they ask me my weight. And like any God-fearing woman, I, I lie, I lie. Then we go up and they make you stand on a scale and I, I had to weigh myself in front of them. Well, now I've lied, now I'm weighing myself with clothes on, I move to a different cord ca- category. And you don't just get to pick your colors. Of what you, they, your weight equals what cord color you are because it determines how much they, resistance. So I, so then they're like, she's not a green, she's a blue. And I was like, Krang. so up I go, I'm now a blue and up I go, up on top of the crane and it's either fall backwards or jump. I, I choose fall because if something happens, sure, I can, I'll just hold on. If, you know, I'll just hold, yeah. save my own life at falling a <laughs> thousand miles an hour. So I, I fall back. And I, when it bounces, bounces, and it doesn't hurt, I thought it was gonna hurt, it doesn't hurt. And I get off and I'm euphoric and I think, oh my God. And just out of the corner of my eye, I go, D- no, that's, I don't see flashing lights right now. And sure enough, I, I look and there, it's just like, what seems to me, just a, a SWAT team of people coming in to shut the place down because it is entirely unsafe. And I'm literally still unbuckling my harness from the ride I just took. Wow, and you had two minutes left over. Maybe some people could learn a lesson. Uh, wow. Interesting. Uh, if you think you know, uh, if you think you know who the liar is, go ahead and vote right now. We do have a chance to probe them with questions, and I've got a couple. And if you have any questions, uh, throw them at Caitlin in the chat room, and she'll pass them along to Michael and Nicole. Michael, I want to start with you. Uh, your buddy, your friend, your buddy, your friend. You never told me his name. What's Chris his name? Hemstreet. Chris Hemstreet. Chris Hemstreet. Chris Hemstreet. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> His brother Keith Hemstreet and Kevin Hemstreet are older. They went to Valley High School with my brother Dan. Chris Hemstreet and I went to school together. Sure. <laughs> and you were surprised that, uh, Nicole, the that there were actually boulders <coughs> in Boulder. Well, when you go up a hiking trail, like it, I thought it would be like a dirt path, like I'm used to seeing, but there's it's made of rocks. It turns out, big, large rocks. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, any questions from the chat room? We do. We have a lot of questions. Uh, Tippy Ketchy wants to know. Mm. Michael, why do you hate red? Yeah, it's an evil color. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, it's always been a bad, I, the times in my life that things have gone wrong, somebody is wearing red, somebody, there was a red card played, something red has always been involved. Too much red booze, whatever it may be. But green is money. Well, green is, I'm from Vegas, and so green's a good color. That's a quarter you chip. You hear that, Tippy Catchy? Green is a good tippy color. Tippy Catchy. Yeah. And let's see, Nicole, can you, Capped Picard wants to know how old was the worker at the top? Younger than me, and I was 20, 21. <coughs> so they were like 16, honestly. The, I a lot of them. them. Oh, it was horrible. <laughs> Just chewing gum and gossiping while they're str- saving my life. Always makes you feel safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't voted yet, uh, go ahead. Uh, you can click whether you think Michael Bunin is the liar or Nicole Sullivan. They don't want your vote. This is like Survivor. You don't want to win this vote. They would rather you believe them, but if you think they're a liar, go ahead and vote. I'm gonna vote right now. If you have another question, go ahead and type it to Caitlin, but I'm going to say right now that I believe that this person is lying, and I'm gonna show uh, Nicole and Michael who I think is lying. By the way, I'm terrible at this game. I rarely get it right, so I hope you guys don't agree with me, but I think that is the liar uh, this time around. Uh, Caitlin, how about you? Do you think you know who's lying this time? I, I'm kind of, I don't know, you're both very convincing, but uh, with the chat room, we have 63% think Nicole is lying. Oh, wow. once again, uh, <laughs> I have not agreed with the chat room. I thought Michael was lying. Nicole, they've said you're the liar. Uh, why don't we dramatically reveal this? Will the real liar please stand up? Yeah. I was right. Uh, I was right. Uh, what's, uh, what's kind of fantastic for you, Michael, is that you get two points because they believed you and you were lying. Fantastic. Had you been telling the truth and they believed you, you'd only get one. I see. Uh, so he's winning right now, two to nothing. But there's a, a lot of, of game BS. left. There's a lot you of game left. You don't get to pick your cord yes. color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want red. There's no. It's not. 
I also okay, thought, Nicole. I think it's Nicole, based on your weight. It was particularly effective when you did this part and this part as the different ways Thank you, you. Go. I, I, I believed her. Uh, you know, they're not just playing for honor. <laughs> I want red. This oh. game has the possibility <laughs> of the largest cash award of any game, not only on the internet, but mm. anywhere. Whoever wins tonight's game is going to get five chances at a hundred and five million dollars in the Mega Millions drawing that was actually already pulled. So this piece of paper right here might already be worth a hundred and five <laughs> wow. million dollars. And because they are celebrities, I'm sure that they will donate an undisclosed yet generous portion of their winnings to some worthy charities. So why don't we find out who those charities are right now? The Alliance for Children's Rights. A very worthy charity. I've played poker for them many times. <laughs> and Team 25, Sean Podine's uh, Foundation for Children with Ataxia. Sounds great. If they have a charity poker tournament, I will play. Yes, me too. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, are you ready to move on to round two, Caitlin? I am. I'm ready. And right. they're ready. The chat room's ready. I'm going to reach deep within the bowl of stories. And Nicole, you're going to go first this time. Okay. And the story you're going to tell us is called Whoa. Horsey. Uh, <laughs> ready? Yeah, please. This is a mortifying story for me. Uh, I was on a first date, basically. I'd met the guy, but on a first date. And he's like, when he's like, let's go to Ojai and do you like horses? I was like, I love horses! And I hate horses. <laughs> and so we go horseback riding to Ojai, just a little day trip. And uh, the guy, I get there and I'm, I tell the guy, the guy running, and I'm like, just give me the short, fat horse, like just the slowest the horse. <laughs> So we're, there's like 12 people. It's like one of those, you know, no one's going over like four miles an hour. They're all boring, but I'm happy that it's boring. And we're going through this thing and so there's like a field and then there's like a passage of like hedges and then I guess a field on the other side. I don't know because I never saw the other side because the horse is like while trying to go through the thing, the horse in front of mine and my horse start fighting like ass to mouth, like and biting, chomping and, and horrible. The next like 30 seconds are a blur. People are being thrown from their horses. I was the last person on their horse. I will stay up because I was holding on to the neck, which I, my mom taught me was a secret. To hold on the horse. And finally the woman comes up and she's like, get off the woman running, get off the, uh, down and everyone's, and everyone's like, yeah, that was horrible. And then all of a sudden I was like, ow, ow, ow. It turns out we had run into a hornet's nest and that's why the horses were freaking out. And the hornets had now moved on. The horses had run, they scatter. Uh, and they'd moved on from the horses to now me. No, just me, and uh, I, I'm, and they're in my clothes, and I am riddled in hornets. And what is the logical thing to do, which I understand why they had to do it, but you can understand my dismay when they stripped me down naked in a field on a first date in front of 12 strangers. And, uh, and then I wouldn't put my clothes back on. That was, that, now I'm naked and I'm embarrassed, but I still wouldn't put, I was like, check it again, check the clothes again, because I was sure there was still hornets in there. And then I put the clothes back on, and um, to top it all off, we have to walk back to the hotel because the horses are gone. So I'm, I'm stung, I think, like 17 times, but I got free vodka and tonics at the end of it, and I took advantage of that. I, I, don't, I drank like six of them just to drown my <laughs> sorrows. Wow. Uh, he didn't get lucky. He didn't get lucky. <laughs> uh, well, that answers one of my questions. Uh, but before we get to the questions, I understand, uh, Michael, you may uh, disagree that this actually happened to Nicole. Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, actually, it was 10 years ago, and I'm on a first date with a girl named Kimberly Erion, who I had been sort of pining after for a long time. And you know, normally when guys, you do the first date, you make the plans, you do whatever, and I had mistakenly said to her, eh, whatever you want to do. And so she's like, let's go horseback riding. So I was like, sure, great. I don't dislike horses, but I like betting on them better than I like riding them. So we go horseback riding, and I even asked the guy, I'm like, you know, you got to give me something slow, like kind of half drugged. It's not going to be a big deal, you know, that I can get on. So we're riding, and things are actually going well. The horse is fine. Her and I are we're able to stay together and make a lot of eye contact. I'm having a very good time. I feel like I'm doing well with her. When the two horses in front of us start to kick a little bit, and then ours start to go at it, and then there's biting and whatever, and then it sort of like just spreads out through the horses. And some people start to get thrown, other people are jumping off. Uh, mine kicks up, and not like, you know, not like movie high, but like it felt like it was that. I hung on to the mane for dear life and then jumped off and kind of fell to the ground. The horses are scattering, and I realize like sort of what happened because I see like a bug on my arm, and so I flick it off, but then I look down and it's hornets, and they're all over me, and they're stinging me, and I don't know what to do, so I'm smashing and hitting my legs. Um, the woman that comes over there is yelling, take your clothes off, and I don't, I don't want to do that. 
So she starts pulling my t-shirt off, but then I realize it has to be done because they're in, they're all over me. They strip me all the way down to my underwear uh, on a first date in front of this girl, uh, and they're shaking out my clothing. Um, I am not, I'm a guy, I'm not, I don't have pretty underwear, and I'm wearing the old lucky underwear. <laughs> Uh, so it's the underwear with a hole in it, so there's that moment that everybody got to see that I'm the guy wearing the underwear, the old Hanes where the band has separated and it looks like it's smiling right here, if you know for guys that are ugly. So uh, finally we get the clothes back and we have to walk back. Uh, the girl was awfully polite and made it seem like we were going to go. Interesting. So many questions. Uh, Nicole, my first question is for you while Caitlin's gathering the questions from the chat room. Uh, when they stripped you down, totally. Uh, no, bra and underwear, bra and underwear, bra and underwear. And was there a courtesy horse blanket of any kind? Or? No, 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 no. I mean, I probably had my clothes off a total of like maybe five, six minutes, which, but that doesn't matter. That's a and long not time. It's a long time to be nude the in a field. When you thought it might happen. And, and I, I was not, I, I, my underwear, listen. I, the, you know, I don't have holes in my underwear, Bunin. But the, I was, <laughs> they didn't match. Let's just say this didn't match that. Uh, and you said he didn't get lucky, but did he get a second date? No, he did not. He did not no, get a second date. We didn't. We remained friendly. We remained friendly, uh, Jeff. And uh, so do you no longer go with the whatever you want to do on the first date kind of I thing? I stopped immediately after that. In fact, it's been hard because I've said, like, let's go to wherever. And if they say no, I just don't go out with them yeah. for fear that something bad's going to happen. Uh, wow, I, it's it's tough for me to picture either of you. Uh, Same thing if they wear red, red, Michael. If they wear red, are you scared to go out on a date with them as well? Then <laughs> I'm not. Uh, yeah, I am. Red. As a matter of fact, no redheads. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, <laughs> that's in a reddish hue what you're wearing, but uh, hopefully yeah. Michael's not too uh, scared of you. Uh, <laughs> any Maybe questions from the chat room for either yeah. of these two liars? Sterling Zip has a lot to say. First of all, they think you would never wear nasty underwear on a first date, so just in case. <laughs> and also, Michael, did you date her again after the first one? I did go out to dinner with her one more time. Yeah, we did. We went out to like a casual dinner, had a nice laugh at it. I always, I sort of felt like it was a consolation dinner, but I was willing to take it. Was this a Las Vegas based date? No, this was out here. This out was 10 years ago out here. So we were up in the Hollywood Hills doing the horseback riding thing where you're, you're supposed to ride to that Mexican oh, restaurant. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. A, that's supposed to be a fun ride. Yeah, I, I only got a quarter of the way there. Huh. Wow, and horn, uh, interesting. Hmm. Uh, any other oh questions? My, oh uh, my. Any other questions from the Lots chat room? Caitlin, go ahead, by the way. If you haven't voted yet, if you think you know who's lying, uh, go ahead and vote for who you think the liar is. They do not want your vote. They want you to believe them. I'm your boy, Jord, wants to know, did you ride with a saddle? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what? Yeah, I don't know. They're <laughs> right. backing with you a lot more dangerous. Uh, but I wish I was that fucking cool. Uh, but it was probably <laughs> Western, I'm guessing, not English. I, uh, I, I have right. no idea. <laughs> but no, my mother taught me that trick. It's, it's true. If you ho like, the horses will, I guess, will try to run you into things to get you off of them. If there's a horseback person in the room, they can back me up on this. But if you hold, if you hold onto their neck, you will always be lower. They can never, you're never higher than their head. So you your mother's your fear was that the horse would try and knock you off its back. My mother rode horses. This is why I was terrified. She would tell me stories about how to save yourself. This is why I was terrified of horses going into this. She would tell me stories. I'm like, why, why would I get on a horse if it's going to try to get me off? Horses will run you into things. They will run you into branches. That's true. I swear to God. They They'll run for them. <laughs> try to get you off. I don't know. And they fight, I, and they fight ass to mouth, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> when I said ass to mouth, I was like, you know when they, they're chomping. <laughs> and the, and the, the, the one ass, the leg and the ass are kicking in the mum's mouth. And they have big old teeth, mean teeth. Wow, we'll be back with more Equus <laughs> right after this. Uh, Caitlin, any other questions? I've decided who I think is lying. I don't know if the chat room has. Uh, go ahead and vote if you Yay. haven't, whether you think Michael Bunin is lying or Nicole Sullivan is lying. They're still voting. It's switching okay, around. We'll give them a chance to settle down. I don't down. know. Both their stories are pretty outrageous, but... Uh, 60% again say Nicole is the liar. Wow, <laughs> what once again, I ass. disagree with you. I again said Michael is the liar, and I think I'm right again, but we're about to find out. Will the real liar please reveal themselves by standing up dramatically? <laughs> ah, wow. <laughs> Wow. You were my vote Wow, I was, which uh, doesn't bode well for the chat room. No. Uh, because if it's easy enough for me to guess, you should be able to guess. 
Uh, Nicole, don't fear. Even though you're behind, there is still a chance for you to win in the ever-exciting lightning round. Uh, Caitlin, you excited for the lightning round? I'm excited. It's my first lightning round. Oh, she's very oh. excited. <laughs> uh, the lightning means. round works like this. Uh, Nicole and Michael uh, both uh, sent me uh, some facts and supposed facts about themselves uh, before this game started. I've chosen some at random and put them on nifty little cards in a big enough font for us all to read without our glasses. Uh, and uh, they will, one at a time, uh, Nicole will go first and she will read uh, her supposed facts to Michael. And Michael, like lightning, yeah. you will answer true or lie. And then I will keep track, and uh, you'll get a point for everyone that he does not guess correctly. So she's re reading facts about herself. Herself. Okay. They may be true. They may okay. be false. You say true or yeah. lie, and the whole way we make it exciting, like okay. lightning. Got it. Like lightning, you got to decide. Excuse uh, me, Andrew. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, Michael Buden's microphone fell off his time. Oh, oh we got to fix that. Thank you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> He got very <laughs> excited with all the lying. <laughs> Apparently, he gets, yeah. he's a physical liar yeah. and, and an effective physical liar. Uh, go ahead, Nicole. Okay. Uh, anytime you're ready, one at a time, and he'll answer, and then you'll move on. I'm scared of fish. True. I'm a member of the Mile High Club. False. I, I forgot my alarm code, and the police came and frisked me. True. I collect $5 casino chips from every casino I've ever been in. True. I was a virgin until I was 21. False. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how, how dare you, sir? How dare you? Okay, let's quickly review. Uh, she said she was scared of fish. Michael said true. It is true. Uh, she is scared of fish. <laughs> Uh, she said she's a member of the Mile High Club. Michael said false. Uh, that is true. I was trying to be what? nice on that what? one. What? <laughs> what? It wasn't a flight to Vegas, was it? No, was no, no. Longer flight. Longer flight. Uh, okay. But didn't, uh, it didn't need to have been. Just, uh, just, said just to uh, <laughs> that uh, she forgot her alarm code and the police came and frisked her. Uh, Mike said that was true. That is not true. No. That oh, never that happened. Uh, uh, she does not collect $5 casino chips from every casino she's ever been in. I do that. <laughs> I, do you I, really? I do. Not oh. necessarily five. Sometimes ones. But I, I did collect like one chip one. from yeah. that one place we went to the, the, in San Diego. Remember that cute pink chip? Oh, I love yeah, that pink yeah, chip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, she said she was a virgin until she was 21. You said false. True. 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 Really? True. 21 years old, ladies and gentlemen. I might want to wow. challenge that one. Uh, on a plane. Uh, I'll give, I'll give you his name. name. Apparently, she was 21. She was on a plane. And, <laughs> and it was uh, great. All right, uh, Michael, your turn. Nicole, your turn okay. to guess. Okay. Like lightning, Michael's going to say these things. You're going to have to say Ooh. true or false. Okay. I turned down a series regular role on the new love boat. True. I once saw an Elvis impersonator get into a fight in a bowling alley. True. I recorded a song with Moon Zappa. True. I worked for Barry Manilow's road manager for a year. False. I'm always ready to eat a hot dog. True. Uh, <laughs> Nicole, you did very well. He is yeah. always ready to hear a hot dog. Yeah. Uh, he did not work for Barry Manilow's road manager. Yeah. He did record a song with Moon Zappa. Perhaps you want to sing a little? Uh, no. No? Okay. Uh, he did see an Elvis impersonator get into a fight in a bowling alley. Was he uh, in full regalia? He was. Honestly, he was actually on a date with his girlfriend, who was the Marilyn Monroe impersonator. <gasps> oh, my and God. A, and a guy had hit on her. And it's a big moment because you get up and you see him. And the only thing I could think to say was, because Elvis was in the right, the only thing I could think to yell out was, kick his ass, Elvis. <laughs> So. <laughs> Why were you uh, meeting immediately? Oh, because the other guy had clearly stepped the over the line. The other guy had yeah. stepped over the line with right, Marilyn. With Marilyn uh, yeah. The guy, it wasn't a John F. Kennedy impersonator. Yeah, that, <laughs> no, would, no. that would have been too much. Uh, <laughs> now, what's interesting, uh, Nicole, is that if you got this last one right, it would be a tie. Mm. Because uh, it was five to four, and we've got one left. And uh, unfortunately, he did not turn down a series regular Damn role it. on the Love Bowl. Damn it. Michael Bunin, you have I'm edged panicked. this out. I panicked. I panicked. I panicked. Five to four. Very close turned game. Turned down? Michael Bunin? Very close <laughs> game. Close game. Yay. Wow. Five to four. Nicole, because you played so well, yeah. you still get one chance at up to $105 million. That piece of paper might already be worth $105 million. Uh, Michael, you and the Alliance for Children Rights get five shots at up to $105 million Ooh. in the Mega Millions. MegaMillions.com. I love com. it. Come on, Ooh, we'll find out if I we hope, won. I hope, I hope. Uh, wow, this was a really fun game and a really close game. Two really good liars. Uh, he apparently... He's a little better than me. Okay. <laughs>
Uh, and Andrew, I actually have one last thing. I, I don't agree with this. I'm just going to say that okay. off the bat. But uh, your friend Matthew Perry says to host worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, show up less. I don't agree. <laughs> exactly. There you go. I, I thought you were actually going to be here, and then we, we waited, actually. That's why we were late. Matthew Perry was supposed to come. Correct. And he oh, should have shown up. That's not true. Uh, well, thanks so much for the vote of confidence, sir. Uh, I want to thank Matthew Perry for watching. I want to thank the lovely Caitlin thank Thompson you. for doing such a great job Woo! as co-host. <laughs> I would like to thank Michael Bunin and Nicole Sullivan for coming and playing and doing such fun for basically what is my little fantasy in my basement. And I, I'm That's really creepy. glad <laughs> for you being here. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, we just pretend we have a game show and it's great. I love it. I really enjoy it. Uh, I want to thank uh, Michael Davis and Robin Ruzan Yay. and Woo! Matt Edwards and everybody else here at theroomlive.com. If you don't come to theroomlive.com, uh, start coming here because they got music, they got comedy, they got cooking, they got authors and they got us. There's a lot of great stuff. Come back, check it out. Video on demand, the live stuff. It's all really great. Uh, please follow them on Twitter, at The Room Live. Follow me on Twitter, at Celeb Liar. Follow Caitlin on Twitter, at Kate with a C. All no, one mine word. was already taken, so I had to get creative. Yeah, it is creative. And it's true. <laughs> it's creative and true at the same time, because it is Kate with a C. It is Kate. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Good night. Good night. <laughs>